Greetings and welcome to Factorio. I'm Dgrain and today we continue our entry level 2 megabase. Where in the last episode just got our first trains up and running and uh, got a nice little coal outpost going, supplying a coal to our base. In today's episode we will try and expand up this way, maybe setting up our first, um, maybe it's called copper smelting in one of the cells and uh, get things transported in to get even more trains uh, running on the line. So if you think that's a good idea, do remember to like the video and if you're new to the channel, do remember to subscribe as well. Now that's, let's get on with today's episode. So um, as I was saying, things are now running, but I did notice something right at the end of the last episode and in between. And that is that we can't. I was about to think it was a huge flaw in our design, but we can't turn off these. But if you look here, if something is off, it will skip this stop. That means it will just keep going over and over and over, even though no place is requesting it. That's why we need to do a small tweak to our current design, which will make it a lot easier to do. Because if you look here, this is the issue. This one is stopped, so I hope they'll wait, but it'll restart over. So to solve that small problem, um, if any of you know, a few years back, you normally used, or even half a year back, you used a circuit network to do it, telling you how many items were available in the system. For example, if two places were requesting um, coal, you'll say, okay, we have a green signal of two coal, that means we'll have two trains running. But um, that's not an issue anymore after we got the, the train limit. But to uh, make sure it works correctly, we'll have to do a bit of uh, magic on these. So right now, this one is closed. That is what uh, makes the issue. And we wanted to wait until there's room in one of these. And that's why we need a new kind of item we haven't used in this series yet. And that is a decider combinator. I'll make two because we will need two. What a decider combinator can do is uh, do some arithmetics, or just decide what to do with a certain input before it transports into um, one of these. So firstly, let's just uh, set these into manual mode because I don't want them to uh, get affected with what I'm about to do. Let's get you into the deep one, then turn you off so you can see what I'm trying to do. Because what we're trying to do is get these to wait until something requires calls and open is open so this becomes like a stacker for whatever item we need and the way to do it is is quite simple firstly we disconnect these two and um oh well i can connect them up again so you can see what i'm trying to explain right now we have it over here to enable and disable and we don't want that we want it to enable train limits so we, we read what's called the set train limit so instead of closing it we set the train limit to zero in theory it, do, it does the same about in, in terms of requesting trains but it makes sure that it doesn't loop until one of them opens if you go this instead you go away you'll set train limit instead so train limit l right now it's set to zero because um nothing is being put into it. If we didn't disconnect this one, then you take it from here down to the left side. Remember that it remembers where on it you click. So if you do it on the right side, that is the output side and that won't work. You will have to go on the input side, then uh, press Q to undo it, then press on the output side and go in. It's very important to do that so you can see these uh, wires going in, otherwise this won't work. And in this one, we can change it to do whatever we want. And we want it to do always one. So I'll put a one signal. If the call is less than, let's say 4K, it'll output a one and I'll output an L1 because L is what the train reads. Right, now if you look over here, train limit zero because it has this one going in. I'll just show you what it uh, has as an output. 
and it outputs nothing. If you just flip it, so if it's above 4k it will output L. You can now see it outputs 1L and it changes its train limit 1. This small tweak to the system makes sure that um, we can control when the trains goes in and let them wait in the depot until that is needed. So I'll just copy this. Oh, let's make sure we did it correctly. When it's less than 4k, it will output. Let's copy this one over here to get the same setup. Like that. Go my little minions. Set as a train limit zero right now because it's below. And now, if we activate the trains, I'm guessing you guys uh, saw that in your own world uh, when uh, when you tested it out. If you activate this now, for example, right here, before it went out because there was no room, but now let's see if you look up here. We'll now say destination full. And that is exactly what we want the older trains to do for when we need this. So, for example, when this goes lower, it'll say destination or we'll just request one of these two. That is exactly what we want. So now we have this as a buffer for all kind of items we need. So, for example, in the future, if we want to request some kind of item. We'll have the same as down here. We'll have something that's only open when uh, when it's needed. Might have to do a train limit fix down here as well. Or when it can request trains in instead of actually blocking them. Otherwise we run, run into the same issue if it just loops these. But it's not as important as the main bottleneck will be uh, down here. So you can go through this, go here and then wait at the drop off. And um, we could fix it up here as well. Or oh, the loading for the same thing to own request depending on how many is, uh, is open. But um, yeah, we'll see. Let's, let's try it with just this for now and then we can change it later. Do comment what you think about that. If we should do it on the loading stations as well. It is not as important. But... Um, we probably need to do it because we can have these requesting without anything being available for pickup. Because then we'll have the same loop. Let's just go down to our unloading station and fix that. As uh, I don't want to run into an issue in the future when we start to oh, copy this around where we uh, start to run into issues. Let's quickly drive down here and see how we'll design uh, that setup. Because it is, um, it is very important for the functionality of this to not have trains driving around without uh, anything to do. And this is a way to fix it. Let's get ourselves a designer combinator. Just one is fine. You can do it right here. Also put it close. Well, let's just set it right here for now. Then we will disconnect you yet again. Please disconnect that. You can go into here and you can go from there to there. So if, for example, we could say anything, but let's do coal. Because we know how many we need. If coal is above, do we say 16k? Then, uh, then you'll output the L signal to um, What's it called? Let's see. There. L signal to here. And then we can set it to, for example, right now. To output one. One thing we have to remember is then we can only request one train at a time. Oh, if that is above 16. So now we're requesting one train. We do have room for two, and I kind of want two to get here. So, um,. We might want to get a rhythm thick tick combinator on this. So it is outputs 1L, then it can multiply it to 2. We might need to do that to get this to work correctly because we want two trains. So if you take you, do comment if you have a better solution than this, because there's probably a better way to do it. And say it takes the input. Is it gonna be. We say input. Let's try and see what it says if we do this. 
green oil from here to there. You'll go from here to here instead. Just check what the output is so we always know what's going on. We have one L going out. Let's place you here. And what do we have coming out of this one right now? We have nothing coming out. That is exactly what we set it to do. So say input. Can we say L times two? As we always output one. And output L. So now it outputs 2L. That's exactly what we wanted to do. As we wanted to do, do 2. I think that's the only way we can control this. So if we take from here now to that one instead, we now have a train limit of 2. And that is exactly what I want to see. And hopefully that means that we'll have uh, this going. And the only thing I'm trying to figure out is what happens when this actually goes below. If uh, the train will just leave, but I think it'll stop at the station until the cargo is full, and then leave. So, so this should work. This little setup. So let's get you disconnected. You adjust the test. And will, this will be how we control our train tracks. Right now it's enabled for two. They can go here and pick up if needed. And they'll only do that after they've dropped up the cargo. They'll go to depot. Then they'll go and pick it up if there's any pickup locations open. And go to the depot and wait on something request, requests the call. So um, this is kind of what I want to do. And uh, what we'll do at, um, at the copper as well. So let's go up to the copper area. Set up our new smelting and try and get uh, things in. Because now we can just add trains to the system and uh, get things running. Shouldn't be much harder than that. Uh, oh, we do need to remove all of these uh, things. You are missing... Oh, power poles. That I can solve. Just throw... Oh, we need logistics for that. Oh, no, never mind. We just need that. They are all being picked up. Perfect. Giving parts all of this and uh, enabling the rest of it. And I want you to clear out all the trees here, please. You can just take it all back to uh, to the base. So we have some, a cover patch here we can't really take right now. Sometime in the future, we can make it go around and just uh, dismantle this part. Somewhat, making it go uh, left and right. But that won't be right now. For now, we'll take this little patch up here and uh, connect things in as needed. So this little patch will need some. Is that actually easy? We can also take this. Oh, let's, let's, take, let's take the copper. I think that'll be fine. I'll just be back in a second after the robots have cleared this out. So see you in a second. So here we are, guys. We have cleared out all the trees and we are ready to set up our first uh, copper smelting area. And for this one, we won't need any trains going in, but we'll need to have an unloading station. Since we're using, um, I want to use this entire patch, let's, uh, let's deconstruct this part of uh, the grid. If we do this, it will still work without any issues. So let's see, just get it away. Thank you. But the trains can still go around, they can still loop out. We'll not be able to use this one stop as the only thing that is, that's not usable. But um, as soon as this is cleared out, we can do it in the future. Luckily, everything is much less, so it's very, very easy to hook up. So for now, let's just uh, get the things in. So if we've seen so many times before, let's hook up our uh, upper area. And luckily, it seems we do have enough room for what we need without any issue or interference from uh, different areas. So you can go there and there. I'd like to take you. I want to take this one, move that one from it. So we actually have a nice blueprint and just get everything inside a new area here. 
to be used for our base. Let's just get the belts. I forgot, I forgot. Going this way. And then we'll just continue that down here. Getting the rest of it hooked up with hopefully what we have to get this going. Let's go here and then we can take pretty much that much if we want to make it a bit faster. There, there, and there. And at some point we'll get the rest of it filled in as soon as we get um, enough miners. Luckily we can always grab that in uh, in our base. There, there. That looks good. As this is pretty much the entire patch covered now, we can easily just take this part, get you hooked up. And there. Having a nice output of uh, of copper. So what we want to do now is pretty much get this into some nice straight lines going into the kind of design we want our, um, our base to have. So um, the design I'm going to use is one I normally use when setting up these and that is um, pretty much this one. It's with electric furnaces and beacons. The beacons we won't hook up just yet. We are still uh, not quite at the area we can start to uh, make uh, tier 3 uh, modules or mark 3 modules. So the design goes like this. Let's start it about here. This should give us enough room buff and we can always get the robots to move it if it's wrong. So pretty much like this is the design we want to use. Then what beacons are on the side? They have to be offset one. But if you don't offset it one, you'll only enable uh, one of these to have three beacons. If you offset it just a single one from that, one can all of a sudden have four beacon touch beacons touching it, and that is exactly what we want. The same on this side. Then we want items in and out. For this one, we'll have the input from the top. That means the input will go around here. And it could, in theory, just go uh, in on the right side. So that means you will jump from here to there. Jump this way to... Let's see, it should be about here, right? And continue. And then the output will go the same way. You'll go from right here to there. There to... There, I think. That'll be correct. So we're doing a setup like this. For example, if you have the raw ore going over here and in on this line, of course, a blue line, we'll have stacking surface grabbing it into here and into this one. Then this one will output. Oh, you can see we placed this one wrong now in terms of the output. We need to move you down one further. Let's sure do correctly. You go grab, grab, grab from this one. Then you output on the left side to get it in. So you'll jump to right there. Because that can have all these outputs here. Then the next one can output as well. Let's get some more in so you can actually see it in action. Let's see. You're going to get fed by that one. You're going to get fed as well right there. There, there, and there. That's how I want to do it. As you can see, that's the same system. All the way going down. Over here, we want you to output to this line. You'll go down the middle. Down in the middle. So you'll output here and here. I should have moved up one. I was just being a bit overly cautious. Wait, no, yeah, it's because we have to be there instead. Let's see if we can get this correct. You output, you output. 
Why is this so hard for me to wrap my head around? <laughs> it's so stupid. Output, output. 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 Yeah, so like that. It's just this top one that's messing up a small amount. Now we have the outputs we need for this to work. Let's get the power down as well. I don't know if this can power all of it. But we will see. Making it nice and much much alive even. You can go there. That can power it all. So we have ore going in to that one. With this one. This one we'll get from here. There. 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 Always in the corner. On the corner here, going out, out, out. Ah, it's because of that one. That's what's messing me up. I also have this one outputting one higher. For example, like this one was down here. Can do that to make it look prettier. Doing something like this instead. Then we have the top one the same. And then we're able to just take this part and stamp it down on top of the other one down here. So as you can see, things will line up very nicely. Something like this should give us uh, something out. We have Right now we have 13. The craft speed 2. So uh, that'll, that'll give us quite a bit. Let's start with this design. Then we'll check with the beacon slater and the productivity modules in it. I can't remember what the exact speed is it's gonna get. So um, we'll try this. And then to get more of them, you pretty much just place one down next to it. So one, two, we can do a column of four, something like that. I actually don't know if we have enough to do it. But let's just try and place it down. See if we're missing anything from this. 12, eight. There we are. That is pretty much our setup. We are missing uh, quite a bit of power though, so we might have to go get some uh, miners. No, not miners, some, uh, some uh, poles if we don't have them flown in at the moment. And then we can get this to work. Let's try something like that. There you can see. That is lined up very nicely. And uh, then it's just trying to hook it up and get the outputs here on the bottom side going as needed. Let's disconnect you. Get normal belts out with four into a four limb balancer. And loading into a train, for example, over here, or taking it up here instead. So looping it around and in. Or taking it straight down, but I want to remove this area as well in the future. So let's just make the output up here for now. One. Two, three, and four. That will take into a balancer going up this way, making sure it goes out correctly. Let's just take you. To be honest, you can do a really, really cool thing. If you take an upgrade planner, so you want to go from here, that one, that one, and that one, to blue, Blue, blue. You're now able to take this one. Go to your balancer right here and upgrade. And now it's blue. And as simple as that, we upgraded all of this to blue belts. That's exactly what we want. Making that go up this way and into our loading station. To be used wherever around the base it's needed. If we have enough items for it have enough so let's do that there we are a nice fallen balancer so uh, let's try and hook it up just to see it in action that is actually <laughs> what i want to see now more than anything as i don't want to uh, have something that doesn't work let's do another fallen balancer probably don't need the blue ones yet so um we can just place it down because it's the easiest way to control things and we know in the future anyway 
You'll need two, so let's place it somewhere over here. If everything goes completely bad, we can always uh, move this with robots. So now to connect all of these up. Might run out of uh, yellow belts before we get that far. We can hook it up with red instead just to get it going. Or to sec, I'll just go and pick up some yellow belts and then I'll be right back. So I just went and got some yellow belts and let's try and hook the rest of this up um, as it needs to be. Might have to merge some of these together to make it look correct. We have one top line we need to merge in. We can just kind of merge in over here. You can always upgrade this to make it faster if needed. But right now this should give us a uh, work flowing. And over here, one for each lane. You can go up this way. Down. Go down here. Not that way. And you can go to here. That'll be the input sorted. Hopefully it will pick up correctly to fill all of these uh, where it's needed. And then we'll have to make an output station where we can load all of our trains with, uh, with, pro uh, with copper plates. Let's go down here and steal this little blueprint here. Um, if I take this, it'll probably change it to coal, that's fine. So if I take that part, pretty much, that's where the four has to go in. Take that up here, place it down. We'll fix these two in a second. All my minions. You'll not be coal. You'll be copper plates instead. Instead of 16, we will change it a small amount, and that is because, um, what's it called? A copper plate stacks a lot higher. But unlike coal, copper plate stacks in stacks of, um, of 100. Instead of a 4,000 per train, it'll be 8,000 per train. So instead of 16 here, I'll do 35 or 32,000 as, as the buffer limit. We'll buffer quite a bit, but it'll be fine to also have something to, to work to. Let's say this 32 instead. Might uh, change this in the future. So if this is buff 22, you'll be... Copper plate pickup. We can do a little icon for it to make it easier to see. Click this little icon here. You can go in, copper plates. Now we have copper plates pick up. And no trains waiting for it. And that's because we have no items flowing in. Just as uh, predicted. So let's get you guys up. There, 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 and there. Should be the correct spot for them. And here. Three, four. So that should pretty much be our entire area hooked up. We're still missing things, but that is uh, fine. We can get the robot to deliver that later. So if we activate this one now, we should have ore flowing in. This should get put into our smelters. Output plates on the belt. Making sure that uh, everything actually flows down as needed. Hopefully they go on both sides of the belt. I have seen issues with it once in a while. But I think we tested it to make sure it actually worked. If not, then I'll have to do a quick redesign. But we'll see. So let's get you started. You can just go to right there. Should activate all the miners. There goes the ore. Very, very slowly. Might need better ones. We'll, we'll see if we need red belts. 
wouldn't surprise me if we did. But first I just want to see if Aura goes on both sides. At least it is evenly balanced as we can see. It goes in. Let's see, go on. Oh, we made a mistake guys. But it's only going on one side now. So I might have to flip this at some point to make sure it goes on both sides. But um, yeah, that's a mistake on my part. Um, I was quite sure I've tested already. Just give me a second. But uh, you see, things going in evenly split. And that is exactly what we want to see. So just give me a sec and I'll flip this over correctly and then explain why this goes wrong. So uh, welcome back, guys. I... Uh, I figured out what the problem was, and it was just, uh, it's something that's quite funny with Factorio, and I just put up a small demonstration so you don't make the same mistake that I did, but it is actually a very, very good point when uh, when building setups like this to get maximum throughput. So if you look down here, this was pretty much the setup we had before, but one from the bottom and one from the right going in. If you test that, if you look here, they both want to output on the left side, this one to go left, and this one also outputs on the left. That's why we can't do this. But if we just flip it, it looks like it's the exact same, it's just flip one. If you do the same thing over here, now this one wants to output on the right, and this one wants to output on the left. Because for some reason when going north, it always outputs on the left. Like for example, if you take it as well this way. So what does it do when it goes down then? Uh, let's just uh, get some power for it, so you can see what I mean. Add one in here. Do you think this is going to go on the left or the right side of the belt? When going up, it's going on the left side. When going down, let's do it with a chest instead. It is still going uh, to the left. So for some reason, when doing north to south, they will always take the left side of the belt which is, uh, is very, very important when, uh, when building uh, things. Otherwise, you will run into serious issue. For example, this way as well. Now it goes on the right side. So you have to figure out which way to go, because if we're going north instead with this one, for example, if this one was flipped and it went this way, then this one actually works now, because it's going south to north. But this one has to be if it goes north to south. So... Um, there's some finicky things you have to remember here, looking at it, and uh, it's quite important you know it if you want to milk, make efficient bases. Um, I can go more into it in future episodes if you want, but uh, I think that explanation works quite well. So hopefully that made the sense for you guys. So all we have to do now is hook them all up, get things flowing, not overly quickly, but it will flow. That will start to generate ore for us. That will add it into our system over here. We can get the throughput up just a small amount by giving it red belts. I kind of want to, so you can see this work just a smidge faster. Doing, please do to that. That's about where the bottleneck is at. Oops. There we are. Let's upgrade you to a red one, just so we have the throughput. That should consume most of what we have in here. That is at least the goal. There we are. As you can see, now we have it all flowing. We have a nice evenly distributed output. And we have things going into here. So uh, this won't open until it has 32. But we can add in the trains just to set it up. We just place one down here. For now, I will then copy the blueprint of the string into here. And right now it's set for coal. But instead of going to coal pickup, I want it to go to... Well, actually no pickup yet because we don't have any pickup. But we want you to... Well, we do have pickup, we just don't have any drop-offs yet. So, um, please go to coal pickup. And I can make it cold drop as well. We want to set you to copper plate pickup. Want to drag it if you hit hold here. You can drag things. Go until cargo is full. And then we'll go. 
Right now it looks like it's open, but it's really not open because uh, the train limit is set to zero. And then cold rubble is here. If you do this, uh, it should probably loop um, maybe more than we want it to. So we do need to have a drop off station before we actually get this going. We can try right now and see what happens if uh, if we do it like this. It is a good test. Please go to depot and go pick up and then go back to depot. There we can actually see if it actually loops. As you see, it finds the way back to the station. As it stands right now, it should just wait in uh, the depot area until um, this one becomes open. So if you look here right now, it should say destination uh, full. This stand is the goal when it's done filling with coal. And uh, then we'll just let this run. Processing a ton of copper, making sure that we can uh, use this around the base. Still only about a third of the way full, what I want it to be, before we start to request trains. So let's go down here and look quickly. It is almost full of coal. And then we'll check it as the last thing this episode. And while we're waiting for this, uh, do comment what you think about this setup and how we fixed it with the, the desired combinators and the arithmetic combinators to make sure it works. And uh, I think I think it's a pretty brilliant this, uh, situation or solution. Because right now it wants to pick up plates. It can't do it because there's no way we can pick any up. But as soon as, for example, we had 10 of these, they'll just wish to wherever there's um, something that we picked up and nothing will be uh, be backed up here waiting for something it can't do and if this runs out of coal at some point you won't have things waiting there for um, for copper that will never get there they'll always stay in here having a nice very nice setup so um, hopefully you're enjoying this uh, do remember to like the video if you think it's cool and do comment what you think about um, this little setup and how things are working we might have to expand it out more. We'll see when we actually add in the beacons and get uh, things flowing. So uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, I've been D Gray, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.